So what this video is going to be about is setting up a default launch state for Bryce. Now when I launch Bryce it goes and looks for a file called default and loads that instead of loading in the default default state when that file doesn't exist. And uh, this probably looks a bit different from the way that Bryce launches for you. Uh, I've set this up to my preference. You can set yours up to any preference you want but in this tutorial we'll just look at setting it up the, the way I like to set things up and you'll see by the process that you can do it in any way you like. So what I'm going to do is use file a new document and that will load it up into more or less a state which uh, it loads up when you launch. Possibly the aspect ratio is somewhat different. So we'll deal with aspect ratio first. If you go file and uh, document setup here's your opportunity to change the aspect ratio. Um, so if you wanted one to one for example, if that was how you wanted it to launch then you would set it like that and uh, you are, can change it, the resolution or the proportions and if you, uh, if you want to do that independently then you can do unchecking and it will set the proportions or if you then you set the proportions there then these will obey whatever proportions you choose. So we'll stick with this square aspect ratio for now. Right, the camera as it launches in its default default state we'll call it, which isn't very easy to pronounce but never mind, okay, starts from the director's view. Now if we look in the overhead view you'll see the director's camera must be somewhere over here because it's looking at the front of the perspective camera, which isn't necessarily very helpful in terms of orientating the scene with this uh, sun rollerball, for example. So if we switch back to director's view and place the sun uh, somewhere in front of us, then uh, we're not actually seeing the sun in the scene. It needs to be over here somewhere, I reckon, to to appear in the scene. I'm just going by the view there. And if we switch to the perspective camera, which we can see in the wireframe, so that's kind of helpful, then we need to put the sun over here to see it in front of us, which would be handy if it could just be that way. So, I reckon the first thing to do is to reposition your camera. Now you can just do this roughly um, by swiveling it around and facing it that way, which I call north. And uh, if, if you want, for example, you can change the colour of the family group. I tend to go for this colour and change the name so you can identify it. And then when we've saved this scene in the correct place, when you load, you'll already have that family named. Likewise for the infinite plane you can uh, give it a family. You can even name families that have not been used just by assigning objects like this. So if we wanted this one green family here to be terrain then we could set that, delete that sphere and then when we brought a terrain in when we're making a scene we can assign it to the green family and it will have remembered the name you've given it. So that just saves a bit of time. So you could go through and give all the colours different names and providing you can remember which one relates to what, then you can uh, call those up when you're making your scene. So I've got the camera facing north. I might want to place it very exactly, like for example on the zero of the x-axis. Uh, I usually favour a wider field of view because I tend to do landscapes. So there you go. That's uh, positioned the camera now and you can see now the sun's in the view there. Other things that we should consider when we're setting up a scene, I'm just narrowing the field of views to show you something here. I'll bring in a Bryce object. Right, the sky settings are going to be part of the default scene. I wish my headphones wouldn't creak like that. I should, uh, I don't know how I can stop that happening. Never mind. Right, the, the lighting setup is going to be part of your scene. So if we look in the settings here, we can see we've just got the default setup we'll going to the Skylab and part of the default setup seems to be setting the intensity at 90 which for modern lighting methods is not very helpful so that wants to be at 100 and then it's up to you whether you lower that because that effectively lets light through objects so if we lower the intensity for example you can see the shadow is getting fainter on the ground there which was a sort of a, an easy way of producing some kind of ambient effect when when computers weren't that powerful and you couldn't use a trimbience method to or multiple light sources from the image based lighting lab to generate that effect. So just set things up in a, a basic way. 
At the moment the horizon's perfectly horizontal. We can't see it in the scene. If you want it to show in the scene, there's a little control here and you could leave that in your default setup. But I tend to leave that off because it means that objects vanish when they go underground. So I'll just knock that off. Get rid of that. So I've set the intensity of the sun shadows at 100. I've left ambient there. I'll just check that this sky dome colour, which is another way of generating a very easy sort of ambient effect is set to zero because oh, I'll bring something back in and show you. If we turn uh, this control to say red so it shows up, what it does is it pro creates a light source pointing directly down that uh, doesn't cast any shadows except on bump. So it will produce shadows on the sort of self shadowing geometry of objects but it will allow the light like the intensity control before on the sun to pass directly through objects so we don't tend to want that either in our setup so we've got our scene set up how we want it to be I was going to have a wilder, wider field of view wasn't I? <laughs> wilder, wider field of view and then we go we give it a render doesn't really matter file and you just save as default. Right, the next trick then is to find out where you've got Bryce installed, where the application is. Well, it's in DAS 3D folder in programs times 86 and it's called the beta just because I've not managed to get around to renaming that folder. So you just need to look for a Bryce 7 folder. Find the exe and you need to save your default file here. So uh, I already had one because that was how I'd set my scene up. So you just select your files and uh, drag them or drop them or copy them into here. Copy and replace. And then when you launch Bryce, so we'll do that now, it should go and fetch those files for you and load Bryce in to your new default settings. So however you've set this up, then that's ready to go. Which I suppose is fairly straightforward. It's, it's not a very interesting render, I admit. So anything you wanted to do, and you could have several different f defaults files, like for example, when I was working on a lot of uh, 360 degree panoramic projection renders, then I set my scene up to have an appropriate aspect ratio for what I wanted to do and oh, with the settings set accordingly so let's see and we might do that so now the scene loads ready into a panoramic projection mode and once again you just go file save as we've already got one default here oh I've moved it into DFAULT that's the only way you can go wrong with this really is not spell it correctly and then as before, just pick those files up, drop them into the appropriate folder, and then when you launch Bryce, which we'll do now, it will just go and fetch those files and load them into the correct state. Now, if you wanted to have several, you'd have to rename them or store them in other folders, because obviously I've just overwritten the folder that I was just using. So that's uh, just something to consider. But uh, since your default setup is going to be the most basic setup anyway, it's not going to take you very long to set things up, other than the fact that you might have named a lot of the families, which can be a little bit fiddly for uh, for setting things up. So, the only thing to bear in mind, and this isn't really an issue at the moment, but this has cropped up in the past, is if you've got a default setup and you've done it in an earlier version of Bryce or in a beta version of Bryce, and you just move it forward without thinking, you can introduce uh, sort of bringing forward bugs from earlier versions which has happened to Horror and I it took a long time to figure out what was going off was because I was using a default launch state that was bringing in a, a bug from an earlier version so uh, that's the only thing to be aware of if, you, if you're setting your default uh, up it's best to do it in the version you're going to use the file in and not just casually pick one up from an earlier version and use that because then you can bring forward a bug. So anyway, that's the end of this uh, short tutorial. I hope you found it uh, useful and it'll uh, 
it'll speed up your process of setting up scenes in Bryce because obviously you don't need to go through the same routine every time to get things you know set up in the way you want to use them.